everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel I have been vegan for five years now that's kind of really crazy to me if you want me to be completely honest it is four years 364 days because it's the 19th right now and technically my anniversary is on the 20th but it just made a lot more sense with like my scheduling to film the video today but it means it'll go up on the 20th because I'm editing it today so it'll go up tomorrow so you guys are watching this on my exact five years of being vegan which is so cool five years ago in 2016 14 year old me decided to go vegan like a few days before Thanksgiving which I don't regret obviously I am wish I went vegan sooner but it was just it was a little weird timing that I chose, but to celebrate that, I am doing a mukbang. I'm doing a big vegan mukbang. I have four different things, all for me. So I am, I ordered from a place called Crossroads, which is a very, very popular vegan restaurant in Los Angeles. I bet if you watch vegan YouTube or just like YouTubers, I feel like even our vegan go there a lot. So. I've been there a few times, but I got all three new things there today. Impossible nuggets with steak fries, and I got this because I haven't had the impossible nuggets yet. Um, I feel like everyone's been raving about them. I have to see if they're worth all the excitement. And then I think these are three different sauces that come with the impossible nuggets, which I need to look at the menu to see what those are. So it's agave mustard, then barbecue sauce, and then ketchup. I want to try the agave mustard. That sounds interesting. The meatball sub, which I'm very excited about. I don't think I've ever had... Oh, and it comes with pickled vegetables, I think. I don't think I've ever had a meatball sub, honestly, vegan or not. But what does the menu describe it as? House-made meatballs, marinara, almond ricotta, and fresh basil. It sounds really good to me. And then I lastly got... I do not know how to pronounce this, so we're gonna um, pronounce it online. Tagliatelle, bolognese. They're very, very known for their pasta, so I felt like that was something I had to get. And then the only dessert that they had on their menu was um, an Earl Grey chocolate tart. And I like Earl Grey, just chocolate in desserts is like not always my favorite, so I didn't want to spend the money on it and not like it. So my friend Audrey was here last week. When she was here, she walked down to this coffee shop down the street and told me there was a bunch of vegan baked goods. So I walked over and got myself a big slice of banana bread. So I have chicken nuggets and fries, a meatball sub, pasta, and banana bread. All for myself and I'm so excited. I don't even know what to start off with. Okay, so let's just something to get started with. I have never filmed a mukbang alone. I've filmed two maybe in the past and they've all been with someone so I, oh wait okay I filmed one actually in the Dominican earlier this year but um it was fruit so it was a lot different than like other food but who cares whatever okay first I'm gonna try the impossible nuggets at this point pretty much every single vegan meat brand has done some type of vegan nugget but Impossible is probably, at least in terms of brands that make patties that are supposed to like very closely mimic meat, Impossible is my favorite. Beyond is good, like Gardein has some good ones. I've tried a bunch of other brands, but Impossible is my favorite. So even though a bunch of brands do chicken nuggets super, super, super well, I have really high hopes for these. agave mustard i mean these are so good they they taste like your typical chicken nugget like a kind of like just like a frozen chicken nugget that you'd have and these are just fries i know what fries taste like so nothing too exciting for the agave mustard it's not bad i can just tell they put apple cider vinegar in it which again isn't i don't know it's not bad but it's not my favorite. If it didn't have the vinegar flavor, it would not taste that bad. Okay, moving on. I want to try everything. And then I'll like actually start eating. I'm trying the pasta. This I'm very excited for. I've had their carbonara and I believe that is it. I don't think I've had any of the other pasta. And they make all of their pasta fresh there. Which is like more uncommon to find house made vegan pasta. But obviously this is a vegan restaurant. So that makes sense. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna try the meatball sub really quick and then I'm gonna get into like everything that I'm talking about and all my topics and stuff and actually start eating. That's so good. But, okay. Now let's get into the actual mukbang. And I asked you guys over on Instagram to submit topics, which if you're not following me on Instagram, that means you're missing out on like a ton of interactive videos because I incorporate you guys in a bunch of my videos. So follow me on Instagram, at Ashley Wicca, if you would like to be in future videos. I have a couple like very, very, very subscriber focused videos coming up. So you should find me over there if you want to be part of those. Five years vegan today. I got a bunch of questions about this. Kind of being like, why did you go vegan? How has anything like changed and you went vegan like your life now versus how it was before? And everything and I want to say I'm not gonna go over my whole vegan story in this video because I have a whole video on my YouTube channel already explaining that which if you want to go check that out I will link it down below or you can always just look up Ashley Wicca why I went vegan it's an old video like I look really young in it um, but I don't really think I would have any reason to remake the video because the information is the exact same if I would make it now so I think I posted it in like 2018, but it's still completely accurate to this day. So go check that video if you want to know why I'm a vegan. Long story short, it was all the reasons, environment, animals, my health, all them together. Um, and how has my life changed? I mean, veganism completely changed my life, but at the same time, it like, my life's the same, if that makes any sense. It changed my life and the way that I've been able to like experience a ton of different food, like so many different foods I would have never eaten if I didn't go vegan. Not because like I didn't, I was a picky eater. I mean, I never have been a picky eater. I've always been like the least picky eater ever, but I just would have never, like would I have ever really known what seitan was? Probably not. I probably wouldn't even eat nutritional yeast or just like a bunch of little things like that that are so good and I would have never experienced them. That's one. Second is obviously I've been able to like start this YouTube channel and meet so many like amazing friends through just like veganism being a commonality. In the long run, being vegan has changed my life but it hasn't really changed like my everyday life at least at this point. To me, I don't, I don't know, nothing feels abnormal to me. To me, vegan is just normal. A lot of people ask me just like in person, like I'm meeting someone, like getting to know someone, they'll ask me like, I guess the common question is how hard is it? And to me, it's just normal. I don't go about my day thinking about the fact that I'm vegan. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I've been doing it for five years. So I just don't really question anything. At this point, I know what food I buy at the grocery store. I know what food I is vegan. I know what food is not vegan. I really so rarely have to check labels for foods anymore. Not because I'm just like guessing. It's just because in five years, you've checked everything. So I just like at this point have everything like memorized in the back of my mind of what's vegan and what's not. So it's all pretty easy. Every single day, there's never been a day that I have regretted in five years going vegan. A lot of people ask me that. A lot of people also ask me like when I see myself not being vegan. Do you really think I would be five years in knowing that like after seven, I'm just gonna stop? I, I, I don't know, that question doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, enough with that talk. I wish that I could give you guys a lot of more vegan tips, but for the most part, I feel like I have given every single tip that I have. So because of that, I will leave a link of resources down in the description. Not just my own, but other resources that I use to help me go vegan. Um, yeah, that's about that. Life updates. I mean, I just filmed a really, really, really big life update video. So that's where everything, all my actual life updates are. But since that video, I mean, I think it's been like... A week and a half, maybe. I think I have an apartment. I technically have not signed a lease yet, so because of that, I'm not going to say 100%. I'm not going to say that out loud or to myself because I really don't want to get myself let down. But at this point, I don't really see what would stop this from going through. About to pay the security deposit, and then we should have an apartment. We've seen at this point probably like six different ones. 
all super pretty. I mean, we're only touring ones that are super pretty that we think we would like. So of course, we pretty much like all the ones that we've seen. But so what it, we're looking at, for the location that we're looking at, the places go so fast. I swear, it'll be listed, and within 24 hours, it already has like 17 people in contact with them. Which makes everything so hard. Like, we toured this one a few days ago, and we showed up. And when we showed up, there was already a couple that had toured and, like, was talking to the guy as we walked up. And so, obviously, to ourselves, we're like, oh, well, this isn't a good sign. Like, if there's a couple there right now, there's probably a lot of tours going on because he's really not doing a great job at, like, spacing them out. So we waited for them to end their conversation and we walked up and was like, hey, like we're here to or whatever. And he's like, yeah, I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. Um, like yesterday, there was a bunch of people that came by and we have six like probable or like very possible tenants already. So he's like, yeah, you can go up and like check, but most likely like they're going to get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying it a little bit. Um, more blunt than he was. I mean, he was he was pretty pretty straightforward, which I'm glad about. I don't want someone getting my hopes up about something. I'd rather have them tell me that I'm probably not gonna get it. So yeah, we walked up and like looked at that one for like 10 minutes, not 10 minutes, like 10 seconds, and then left. But then straight from there, we left to another one, which I liked actually like 10 times better than the other one. It was much better budget, better location. It was smaller, but um. I think every other thing that's good about it outweighs the size. Um, like the size difference compared to that one and the one before. The one before wasn't honestly even an option. We didn't even apply for that because there were just so many people applying. But we applied for the second one and I really, 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 really think it might happen. And if that happens, the move-in date would be November 30th. So I have to keep you guys updated with that because things can always change. But as of now, things are looking really good with the apartment. And this I'm just super excited for because that means so many fun videos coming. Um, empty apartment tour, like move in with me. Room transformation, first grocery shop, like kitchen tour, pantry tour, um, fridge tour. I love pickles. I do not love these pickled vegetables. I just tried the pickled cauliflower. I don't, there's some type of pepper in the brine and it's not the spice, it's just the flavor. I'm just not a huge fan of. But yeah, that's kind of my only life update. Ooh, I'm hosting a Friendsgiving in a couple days. And I'm making a giant vegan feast for that. And I'm filming that for a video. So that'll be my next video after this. I'm extremely excited. Okay, so now let's get into the topics that you guys gave me. And I was not expecting this. Well, I would say 30% of the questions are like vegan, going vegan, vegan tips related. Another 30% is just like a bunch of random stuff. But like the other 30% are all boys and relationship questions. So I'm going to talk about it. But basically, I would say most of the relationship questions were just like asking me for general advice. I'm going to be speaking from like a heteronormative perspective. Also, I'm straight myself. I've only ever like talked to, dated, whatever. Straight males. So from my experience, my perspective, but I do think that the advice that I'm going to give applies to everyone in every relationship. Also, I know most of my viewers are also young girls. So hopefully this information applies to most of you or a good amount of you, especially around my age. Find it very, 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 very common. I've experienced firsthand and seen through so many of my friends of them talking to a boy and this boy will treat them as if they are in a relationship hang out all the time do a bunch of things together and obviously the guy will say a bunch of things will make them feel 
like they're special, but they will never put a label on it, which is absolutely fine. Absolutely no problems with that. If both parties are under the same impression, teenage boys at this point have a script. I've talked about this with my friends. When it comes to a point where they kind of have to let the girl know that maybe they're not actually um, looking to be their boyfriend like they've led them on to think, they say the same phrases. Oh, well like, I'm just not ready for a relationship right now. I just know that you deserve better than me. I, I'm only doing this to save you. I care about you so much and because of that, we just like, we can't be together. I'll still text you Saturday night at midnight for you to come over. And my piece of advice, which has seemed to do me very well, a talking stage is whatever that, that means to you, should not be difficult. You should not be constantly texting your friends or calling your friends like, oh, he did this. Like, I don't know if I should text him back this. I feel like I should wait like a few hours. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like two things. One, early stages of relationships should be easy. If they are not, it's probably a foreshadow of how the relationship's gonna be and there's no point in hanging on to something and someone you just met, if there's already issues, like you don't know them that well, like they can go, goodbye. Number two, if the person is not giving you the attention or like respect you deserve, drop them, leave them, stop talking to them. I am telling you, you will save yourself like so much time of being strung along by this person and I think if it's meant to be it'll be and it shouldn't be something that is super 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 hard or super difficult not something you should be fighting for not something you should be stressed about like crying over if it's not an immediate yes then it's a no if you are confused then it's a no and then I also got questions about like first dates and um, I don't, they've always never made me nervous. I think it's just kind of the same type of mentality of like, if it goes well and they like me and they want to see me again, cool. If after this, even if I was excited about them, if after this one date, they text me and they're like, yeah, like I'm not interested in like going out with you again. I didn't know them like two hours before. What changes in my life? Nothing. So I don't know. Go into first dates thinking nothing. Don't have any expectations. If it goes well, cool. If not, oh well, they're lost. Holidays as a vegan. I now have five full years of experience, so I would say pretty knowledgeable on this. For me, when I'm going to a gathering, I will bring my own food. Not just my own food for me to eat, but my own food for other people to try. Sometimes for family gatherings, like this year for Thanksgiving, I think my family is just going over to my aunt and uncle's house and it'll just be like my immediate family and my aunt and uncle, like that's gonna be it. I don't have like a big extended family so I don't ever have like super, super big family gatherings. But like this year I'm going to be bringing a, I just saw, I just saw this at Trader Joe's the other week. They had vegan roast. They have like a normal Trader Joe's vegan roast like this big or whatever, but they had a mini one that was like this big. So I picked that up and then I'm going to bring, I think I'm gonna make like a different dish to bring with. So I would normally bring, you like you wouldn't have to do that vegan roast. If you could make a dish that has a full meal, like would be a full meal, you could bring that to a family event. So you have something to eat and other people can try a vegan thing. Like make something that you know is filling enough that if there are no other vegan options there, you could have it. Like don't bring vegan mashed potatoes because you don't want just a plate of mashed potatoes. But if there was some type of like pasta, dish if you use like protein pasta something that in that dish itself could be a full meal i would say make something like that there's so many vegan thanksgiving recipes you can look up vegan thanksgiving recipes and then also i'm posting a video in like two days that will show a bunch of vegan thanksgiving recipes so that's my advice is just to bring something for you to eat and to share that is vegan that can be a full meal in itself if there's no other vegan options I also got questions about how to deal with judgment from people on the holidays about being vegan. And I mean, I've never had, I mean, no, I've definitely been like questioned and stuff. I've, okay, I've definitely been questioned. There's nobody in my family that's been like outright mean about it. But honestly, I don't really have good advice for this. I've been asked this question by you guys so many times, like, how do you deal with people judging you for being vegan? I just like, I don't care. I don't know. If someone else is really that concerned about what I'm putting in my own mouth, 
Like they're clearly, they're clearly living a boring life. If that is something they're so focused on. If they are really going out of their own day, taking time out of their day to make a comment on what I am personally eating, that says enough about them. I don't know. Answer the questions to the best of your knowledge, educate them if they're interested. If not, it's just like such a waste of breath. Um, so yeah, those are my holidays as a vegan advice. I now need to go to the questions that you guys sent. I'm gonna go answer a few more while I try my dessert. Workout routine and makeup routine. Okay, workout routine, I have absolutely not one right now. I'm sitting at a coffee table eating a bunch of food and banana bread. <laughs> Which is the sun. Pretty good banana bread. I mean, I'm not a big banana bread critic. If it's moist and tastes like bananas, then I think it's good. So, check those two boxes for me. Um, I do actually want to get into home workouts when I move more consistently, but I feel like for the next like week and a half of my life until I'm like settled in there, or, like a couple weeks until I'm settled in there, it's going to be kind of a lot, a little hectic. So, it's not going to be something I'm focusing on right now. But once I'm settled in, I do want to get into home workouts. Makeup routine. I don't know the names of any of my products. And also, I'm not like too product specific. I think I use CC Cream from It Cosmetics, Laura Mercier Setting Powder, Blush, Mascara, and then Faux Freckles from Freck. Those are all that I use. I don't know the blush brand or the mascara. Actually, no. The mascara, I always get the CoverGirl vegan one the vegan cruelty free it's the green blue one and then the blush i don't remember and then i just use tinted lip balm so that's it a lot of people are asking me about my future travel plans so sorry to disappoint i know i traveled a ton this year um which a good amount of it was documented like i did a lot of what how to like eating vegan at this place but those videos or just like me traveling in general is coming to an end for the time being since i'm signing a year lease obviously i'm not paying rent i am not um able to travel and pay rent so i am going to be focusing all of my time and money into rent so i have no travel plans as of now like actually nothing planned not a single flight booked i might be going to north carolina for a little bit in December, but that's not like a big travel. That's just to go visit a friend. So travel era has ended. It was a fun year, but I can only do it for so long. Thoughts on mock meats and vegan cheeses? Amazing. I don't know. There's a lot of kind of research or like trial and error that I went through. I've definitely tasted a fair share of not great vegan substitutes. But also coming with being vegan for five years at this point, I have everything memorized like down to like the brand, like specific products if they're good or not. So I don't know, for vegan cheeses, I would say Vio Life, Field Roast, like Chow. Actually, I don't really get the Chow ones because the flavors are a little weird. Like they're not like common cheese flavors or like types, but they taste good. So I would say Vio Life, Mio goes for like fancier cheese wheels. Follow your heart. Follow your heart's really good too. Um, so delicious. Their shreds are pretty good. I don't know. Vegan cheese is actually becoming a little bit better. And then for meats, I would say Impossible Gardein. I think those are my favorites. I don't really know. I kind of just buy random ones and try them. Um, I try a bunch of different stuff. I don't have any meats or cheeses that I like continue to buy regularly. I did not. I'm probably so late on this. And if so, was Ari. Um, I had no idea Oatly had yogurt. That's news to me. I saw it at Grocery Outlet the other day for $2.99, so I bought it. But I was at home in Long Beach then. So I had to leave it at my parents' house. I won't be able to try it until next Wednesday. It's Friday right now. I thought I was going home Sunday, but I'm doing Friendsgiving then, so. Uh, but if you have had the Oatly plain, I just like the plain yogurt, let me know if it's good or not. Because I'm excited about that. My favorite vegan yogurt by far is the plain Kite Hill. But I am so full. I ate like half of the chicken nuggets and fries, half the pasta, and half of 
the meatball sub oh and half of the banana bread so that was a big meal i am stuffed but now i have leftovers for the next couple days and i'm gonna have thanksgiving leftovers actually it's pretty good because i'm not trying to buy a ton of food right now just because i'll be moving in a week and a half which i guess a week and a half is like not like it's a decent amount of time but i just i'm trying to move with as little as possible so if i have leftovers for a good bit of that i'm not complaining but yeah i <laughs> i don't know what this video was i don't know if it made any sense but <laughs> i hope you enjoyed watching this video hope you got something out of it i hope it wasn't just me like word vomiting for an hour but thank you so much for watching i love you guys so much i'm so excited for my upcoming a little bit I don't know, it's gonna be very fun for you and me. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.